Okay, thank you for that. Okay, so allow me to go over our agenda for this afternoon. So um, in the next slide, you'll see that um, in order for us to have a productive program, we patterned this workshop after the plan, do, check, and act framework. So this workshop will tackle the steps needed for businesses to develop their own sustainability roadmaps and action plans to define goals and targets, leveraging on the project's resource efficiency and greenhouse gas tool. So this is where um, yours truly comes in. Uh, and then we will show opportunities wherein they can increase resource efficiency and decrease their GHG emissions in their operations using the indicators of the RE and GHG tool. So this will be tackled by several speakers. So um, because there is not simply one approach to implementing climate action in the field, right? So we will be joined by uh, Dave Albao from PRRCFI, tackling the management of water resources, waste generation, and marine litter. And of course, our very own Ms. Brenda Botardo from PSEPSD to tackle SCP knowledge building for staff. Uh, Ms. Rina Papio from Green Space Filipinas to tackle how we can repurpose food waste. And last but not the least, step three, check and act, uh, actually steps three and four, will be discussed by engineer Maki Maceda, tackling how we can monitor efficiency initiatives and track KPIs. And of course, evaluate the progress of the whole process um, by discussing sustainability reporting for the tourism sector. So as you may have noticed, the workshop was primarily designed for hotels and mice for the development and implementation of their action plans. But um, I saw that we had some registrants from the LGU and other sectors like the academe. So thank you for taking an interest in our workshop. And we hope you can take away key insights from today. So um, before anything else, I hope that we can take like a quick photo op. Um, with some of our speakers, if uh, I think uh, we already have, uh, of course, Brenda here and Sir Maki. Um, not sure if Miss Rina is here yet, but um, if we can have a quick photo op with everyone, uh, if that's okay, uh, if you can show your smiles. <laughs> Hi, Sir Maki. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Kim. Can you open your camera po and then we'll take a quick photo? Okay. Um, one, two, three. One more pop. One, two, three. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you for that, Kim. So, okay, um, let's uh, just begin with a quick uh, icebreaker. So, for um, for everyone to, you know, get all warmed up, uh, you know, we have a little icebreaker prepared for you guys. Um, a little twist on the game, uh, have you ever? So, um, while Kim pulls up the slide, uh, kindly go to menti.com and type in the code 7472366. So I will be uh, pasting the code on the chat box as well uh, for everyone's reference. There you go. So again, please go to menti.com uh, so that we can uh, have a bit of an icebreaker. Okay. So um, just waiting for a few more uh, participants to go in the, the, the Mentimeter um, uh, platform. Uh, so ayun. Uh, Kim, just kindly, uh, what do you call this? Update, update na lang on whether you've gotten the Mentimeter up and running. Okay. So again, um, that's menti.com. Uh, type please type in the code seven four seven seven two three six six. Again, that is seven four seven seven two three six six. Okay, so I have a couple of um people already there. So thank you. So um, I guess we just wanted to ask uh, in the next question, um, in which part of the Philippines or the world are you in right now? Okay, umbilis. <laughs> You see, so yeah, um, same. Our, actually, our office is also based in uh, QC in Cubao. Um, oh, wow, okay, Pasig City, Manila, Nueva Ecija, Zambales. Okay, Palawan. Okay, thank you so much for um, uh, for uh, inputting your, your, your residences. Um, okay, uh, next question. So, again, this is just uh, really to go through the, the slides really quick. Um, have you created a business action plan before? So it's really just a simple matter of uh, yes or no question. Ian. 
Okay. Ayun, so I see that um Ayun, uh, no, no, we have we have five people uh, who have not created a business action plan before, so that's okay. Oh six. Okay, so I hope that we you can take um I think this workshop will be very productive indeed, uh, since we not we're not only tackling um a few aspects of what an action plan is, but how to create a sustainability action plan uh, as well. Okay, and the next uh, slide. So I, I'm guessing I kind of know already what the, the answers are for this, but have you created a sustainability or climate action plan before for your business or for your organization? So yes or no? Okay. Okay, yeah, there, there you go. So, okay, thank you so much for your honesty. Um, and I'm very sure that uh, everyone will be um, will be, what do you call this, benefiting from this workshop indeed. Okay, so uh, last uh, icebreaker question. Um, name one challenge that you or your team usually encounters in implementing any action plan with or without sustainability. So again, I know that you guys haven't um, done any action plans yet, but um, if you were to create an action plan and implement it, um, what would you envision um, the challenges of uh, implementing? So. This could be with the financial part of things, maybe allocating budget or staff um, or over or underestimating external factors such as, um, uh, I don't know, maybe the market, um, uh, monitoring or reporting systems. Okay, so we have some, we have, is that funding? Uh, we also have knowledge on science-based sustainability practices. So yes. Uh, um, oh, I'm really glad that uh, someone mentioned knowledge on science-based sustainability practices because uh, Brenda will be able to fill you in there later on. Um, cooperation and participation, okay. And government limitations, yes. It really needs to, um, multiple sectors really need to work together to be able to uh, implement such initiatives. Uh, incentives, yes, that's true. Incentives for both the staff and for, um, for actually the whole organization as a whole government support and how to balance environment and profit. Okay. Okay. I think those are really, um, of course, valid answers. So thank you so much for your inputs. Um, any more coming in? If none, oh, empowerment of tourism establishments in monitoring and implementing CCA components. Okay. And lack of training. Yes. Uh, capacity building is really one of the core pillars like, of implementation of climate action plans. Uh, which we will be able to expound later on. So again, thank you so much for your inputs. Um, while Kim pulls back the slide from a while ago, um, I just want to share that we may not be able to tackle all of these challenges, of course, as we would really like to focus on the environmental aspect of action plan implementation, but uh, these inputs and insights, of course, will be taken into consideration. So, um, yeah, so as Kim will be pulling up the slide, um, I'm wearing two hats today, actually, as both moderator and siguro part lecturer. <laughs> so ayun, uh, I just wanted to begin with step, uh, step one, no, planning. So again, the first step really of the framework is um, the but plan, do, check, and act. So we will be beginning with planning. So planning is essential in all of things, all of our um, um, aspects in our lives both in personal and uh, business aspects, right? So um, also essential in implementing any sustainability strategy, of course, big or small. And um, we really need to assess where we're at, uh, where we want to go using what we have to get there. So these can be our available uh, resources, double checking our budget allocation, our staff requirements, um, anything under the sun that we need to be able to implement an action plan properly. So. Uh, in the next slide, I uh, actually just want to mention that part of the planning stage is really to be able to define our goals and targets uh, to include in our sustainability or climate action plan. So this is what I will be tackling in um, my segment. So these will be based on our experiences here at the project and, um, of course, leverage, leveraging the tools and resources that we've been using to assist hotels and mice. And um, the scope, actually, of my segment is shown in the next slide. 
So I will be tackling really the significance of um, the of creating a baseline. So I want to emphasize that significance of data collection, of ensuring that our monitoring systems are smooth and um, up and running before we do any analysis or target making. So because again, how can we manage what we uh, don't measure, right? So this is also where the, the where the project's RE tool comes in, how it helps businesses in creating your baseline and not just businesses, but also I think uh, LGUs as well. And based on our experience at the project, we can uh, define our goals and targets using these three things. So um, how to use your baseline data, how to use the targets from our project roadmap, and of course, comparing performance with international benchmarks that um, is also found in one of our project's knowledge products. Uh, yeah. And also, lastly, we will be tackling a bit of climate action plan development because, of course, we need to know at least the basics of what a climate action plan really contains. So, yun. Okay, so without further ado, in the next slide, yeah. So, uh, thank you, Kim. Uh, a baseline is defined as a minimum or starting point used for comparison. So, um, before we really uh, uh, encapsulate why we need to create a baseline, we need to know what a baseline is, of course. So. Um, that's the definition of a baseline. It's really the minimum or starting point that we use for comparison. And using terms of the RE tool, we use baseline year, uh, baseline year, quote unquote. And usually we appoint 2018 or 2019 as the earliest baseline year for businesses because um, in our experience, more um, those years are the years that businesses have more sophisticated monitoring systems compared to previous years parang mas na -re recover po nila lahat ng data agad um, uh, during those years um, compared to previous years. And this can also be the year wherein your business actually decided to act. So that's also a suggestion. So again, this can be the year wherein your business decided to act or you can also um, jump in with the other businesses to appoint 2018 or 2019 as your baseline because those are your business as usual um, years of operation. So having a baseline would allow your hotel or property to set measurable targets. So you can't get to your point B without first setting a point A in the first place, right? That's um, uh, parallel to, to booking like a grab or, or lala move, diba. Right? So this will help you monitor progress in the long run while you integrate more and more resource efficiency initiatives. And um, nationally, having a baseline for our local tourism sector means knowing how much the sector is contributing in terms of GHG emissions. So not just to the Philippines um, total emissions, but global emissions as well. And it will really help us pinpoint more accurate solutions. So I keep on mentioning the RE tool. Um, so in the next slide, I'd, I'll just give like a really brief background of the tool. So again, the RE tool um, can be used to collect baseline data and monitor progress. And it is actually a very powerful Excel file developed by um, uh, uh, resources action program and UNEP Copenhagen Climate Center. And it is also aligned with the uh, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the values that they use, and of course, scientific studies on food and water footprint or impact. And we also got the electricity grid factors of um, uh, from, from the Department of Energy for our, um, for our inputs in the RE tool. So yeah, just a bit of um, background on who, who are the tool developers of the, the tool. And now we move on to who, what exactly the, the RE tool monitors. So in, the, yeah, in that slide, um, you can see that we actually monitor scopes one to three of emissions. So these are indirectly and directly controlled emissions that are being monitored by, by the RE tool. So um, indirectly and di directly controlled emissions um, of the organization or the property or the establishment. So these are the indicators that the tool is measuring. So there are, of course, guest nights. We really need um, the facility info, of course, of the uh, establishment. So um, we also monitor or track your conference or MICE delegates because, again, guests who visit um, only during the day use a different level um, or amount of resources than those who check in for the night. And the tool also tracks your energy consumption. So um, this is very common among uh, tourism establishments. Uh, the engineering managers of each establishment will really um, are really tasked to be able to monitor how much energy or electricity or fuel they use. 
Um, it also, the RE tool monitors also uh, water use, um, wastewater, food waste, uh, whether it's sorted into preparation waste, spoilage waste, customer plates, or mixed. Um, and it also tracks different categories of solid waste, um, whether this is recyclable, residual, or unsorted. And it also tracks your food purchases because, the again, the agricultural production of food is quite heavy on the environment. And lastly, uh, we the RE tool also tracks single-use and multiple-use plastic products or reusables. So um, in the next, next slide, using the RE tool, so we've identified our um, baseline data from which to set um, targets from. So we have our point A, we have our baseline, right? So um, this is where we're able to define our goals and targets using our baseline data. So um, again, I mentioned three things. So this is the first one, using your baseline data. So again, the baseline year can also be the year you decided to act. And uh, really, the RE tool helps us ask the right questions. No, it sets us in the right direction rather than implementing random, uh, good, but random initiatives. But that don't necessarily mean we're effectively lessening our impact. So for example, on the screen, um, as you can see, we've uh, this is like a sample um, inputs from the RE tool. So again, it measures scopes one to three. So you can see that scope three is the culprit. So mataas yung emissions niya um, ng hotel A, for example, on food purchases or sales and waste generation. So more on the food purchases part. Um, here it's in the example, it says it um, emits uh, 1,000 tons of CO2 equivalent. Um, and that is the parang basis of um, identifying scope three. So you can also think of scope three or the food purchases aspect as an opportunity to be able to um, implement mitigation actions. Uh, for example, um, lessening uh, food waste or um, uh, get uh, implementing sustainable procurement in your uh, food purchases. So those can be seen as opportunities because we've already identified what the culprit is, what the opportunity is. So uh, we also remember uh, to be uh, smart. So again, uh, please do remember that when you're defining your goals and targets, uh, you have to be specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound. So the RE tool especially helps us with the M and the R. So yun, at least we have the data to be able to, um, to form our baseline. Um, in the next slide, so as you can see, I, I've also snapped, I've also snapped um, a screenshot from the RE tool. So this is actually the net zero uh, trajectory that shows whether the business is on track or off track, or um, yeah, whether they're following the, the target of 50% reduction by 2030. So it, um, the blue line, but, uh, the blue line below the orange means your company is on the right track. But if it's um, on top of the orange line, then that means um, it, you're not on track. So it's really more of an in instructive snapshot um, of the RE tool. So uh, the more that your numbers really in the RE tool um, change because of your initiatives, the more you can see if you're actually being effective or and efficient or not. And um, Again, uh, I'm not going to go super into the details about this because um, we usually schedule uh, training sessions with hotels and mice individually. Uh, so um, if you're a hotel, if you're a hotel or mice and you haven't been using the RE tool yet, so please do message us if you're interested. Um, we can schedule a, a one to two hour training session with you before the year ends, before the project ends. So yun. Um, you can also download the RE tool uh, free online on the One Planet Network website. So second um, way on how we can define our goals and targets is, of course, using the targets from the roadmap for low carbon and resource efficient tourism in the Philippines. So this is the project roadmap. Um, uh, so what is what exactly is the roadmap? So it, it is a strategic document. Um, that is aligned with the sustainable development goals, and it's really like a master plan guide for both the public and the private sector. So it's good for um, businesses to adopt. It's good for policymakers to adopt. It has a list of actionable items that they can really uh, see step-by-step step what can uh, help them reduce their GHG emissions. So these actions are, re are revolve around systemic solutions, um, sustainable food value chain, sustainable events, zero pollution from tourism, and sustainable energy. So each solution has their own suggested uh, main and supporting activities with uh, targets that converge and aim to reduce GHG emissions by minimizing food waste, 
um, improving solid waste management and wastewater treatment, and of course, getting rid of problemat problematic SUPs and increasing clean energy. So um, I'd like to expound on the roadmap by uh, showing the targets. So the main target really of the roadmap, um, this was published in 2019 actually. So the main target was 30%. So um, in the next slide, you'll see that uh, these are the uh, sub-targets of the roadmap, which are actually a bit more conservative, right? Because the global target that we usually encounter with, um, that we usually encounter are 50% uh, already by uh, 2030. So um, there's still very good examples of targets that we can include in our plans. Um, it's uh, good to align with not just these kinds of targets with the SDGs, but also with uh, national, um, national and uh, locally assigned uh, targets. So specifically if you're LGU or if your uh, city has um, uh, a target of, of these kinds of reductions. So it can be targets uh, in GHG emission reduction, food waste reduction, zero untreated waste, uh, sewage or um, reduction in non-renewable energy use. Uh, of course, uh, taking note that monitoring of hotels and mice should be at the at the forefront because again, uh, we cannot uh, stress this enough. You can't manage what you don't measure. Yeah. So um, in the, in my last few slides, I'm just going to go over the last one, uh, comparing performance to international benchmarks. So if you can, yeah, click on the that one. So. Is, as you can see, uh, part of knowing where your property stands um, uh, among competition is comparing your performance with international benchmarks. So um, we have energies and um, we have, uh, for, for example, uh, if your hotel uh, has um, less than 2,555 um, kilowatt uh, per guest per year, then you're actually in the excellent range. But if you're a bit more than that, then you're um, on the uh, high uh, range. So um, Kim, if you can keep clicking until um, the, yeah, that one. So we also have benchmarks on, um, on what you call this water, water use. Uh, we also have benchmarks on uh, uh, food waste. Uh, yeah, the, the third one, sorry, yeah. So uh, for, these can be targets that you can use or you can aim for in your uh, sustainability action plans. So you can find actually these benchmarks in um, the document that the fourth click, Kim, so yeah, thank you. Uh, so that's the manual uh, of, of the project that's complementary to the uh, RE tool. So this contains a lot of information talaga that, that can be beneficial for um, not just a business, but also for an LGU to use to compare their um, hotel and mice constituents. So again, it's called the manual to me measuring and monitoring RE and GHG emissions in the hotel and conference sector. So this is also downloadable on the one Planet Network website. Okay, so um, in the next slide, um, I'll just go over briefly uh, the components of an action plan. So um, again, uh, you want to be able to uh, set your targets and then formulate your action plan, right? So um, this will be your property's master guide and monitoring progress. So this can be added to your existing business action plans. Um, with the addition of um, ESG or uh, environmental, social, and corporate governance uh, indicators. So these are the key components of a typical action plan. So you have, of course, your actions or your commitments. So these con are the, or your proposed targets or commitments that um, you have identified step-by-step uh, -step activities. This contains the list of activities that you need to achieve. So the simpler, the better. You can keep it to um, three to five steps. And then for persons or departments responsible, so this usually contains uh, who exactly will be responsible for monitoring the progress of this um, of this uh, this action point. So whether it's your compliance officer or your uh, general manager, or even maybe the executive assistant to the general manager. So we've also had uh, focal persons uh, like that in our experience. We've also, uh, we also have resource, resources required. So what exactly are the types of resources that this action point requires? So whether it's in skills or knowledge or technical support, so please list them down. Um, and then expected timeline. So when do you uh, foresee this to be achieved, whether it's in three months, in six months, in nine months? So again, please be as specific as possible. 
and your key indicators, um, units of measurement uh, to measure progress of the activities. So these can be, for example, your annual GHG emissions per guest night, your monthly GHG emissions, um, or the percentage of food waste that you want to divert from the landfill. So again, as specific as possible. Um, we will also be providing you actually with um, uh, the, this template uh, after this uh, workshop for your uh, reference, especially for hotels and mice who really want to begin their uh, action plan development. Um, in the last slide, so your actions can really be grouped according to five pathways. So this is inspired by the Glasgow Declaration. So um, this, is, uh, this is in measurement, in decarbonization, regeneration, finance, and collaboration. So what this slide really um, means is that the resource efficiency tool can help in the measurement and decarbonization of your, uh, your, of your business. And then when you say to regenerate, it just means that um, actions that, uh, that um, what do you call this, that uh, entail restoration and protection of ecosystems, uh, supporting nature's ability to draw down carbon, as well as safeguarding biodiversity, food security, and water supply. Um, finance and collaborate. So this really just means that you need to um, allocate enough resources to implement your action plan and to maximize the partnerships that you have. So for example, if you have uh, partnerships with the LGU, if you have partnerships with um, an NGO, then please do use them. Use all of the resources at your um, at, at the best of your capabilities because uh, they're what you have at the moment. So please do make the um, most out of them. Uh, Ayun, so I really hope that I was able to, um, to briefly go over the step one um, uh, to the best of my capability based on our experience on the project. So that's our um, definition of um, how to, uh, sorry, define goals and targets for your climate action plan. So Ayun, I would say thank you, but I'm still moderating the session. So. Um, anyway, I hope that step one is a little bit clearer for you guys on how to uh, define your goals and targets, how um, important having baseline data is. So we will now move on to step two of the plan, do, check, act framework. So um, implementation of various sustainability approaches in your property will be tackled by uh, several speakers. So um, if, uh, what do you call this? I see that uh, Dave is already here. Uh, Dave, would you would you be comfortable to still go ahead, or or would you still be preferred to uh, be moved to the next? Okay, so see it. Okay, thank you so much. So yeah, uh, Dave will go ahead. Um, uh, so the first uh, first of which we'll top we'll tackle the topic um, managing water resources with what waste generation and problematic uh, plastic. So. Um, Dave Albao works on natural climate solutions as the executive director of the Philippine Reef and Rainforest Conservation Foundation. Uh, so they care for Danhugan Island, a wildlife sanctuary with environmental education and ecotourism located in Negros, Philippines. So they have also implemented projects funded by USAID, GIZ, and the EU on reducing ocean plastic and mainstreaming circular economy with the homegrown Wala Usik campaign. So Dave was a professional fellow on sustainability in Oregon, USA, a graduate of Swedish Institute Management Program on Sustainable Business, a Governors and Conservation Achievement Awardee, and a Gen T leader of Tomorrow, named by Tatler Asia for their work on nature conservancy. So everyone, please welcome Dave Alba. So Dave, you have the floor. Good afternoon, everyone. Very excited to have a discussion with you if you are operating any tourism program uh, like the exchange because uh, this is in no way a prescriptive uh, uh, presentation, meaning I don't want to uh, teach anyone because we're all learning. We're all trying to be environmentally conscious and really reducing our impact to the environment that is primarily the source of um, any tourism endeavor. So let me just share my screen. And as I've said, I am a bit more interested to have the discussions with you. So please feel free to send me your questions. Um, and I just wanted to give a disclaimer that I'm not authority. And um, I'm just sharing our experiences in Denhugan Island. So I hope that you have heard a little bit about this island. Um, so it is a case study for conservation tourism. I will give you some more information as we go. Uh, but 
first of all, I'm the executive director. Can you see my screen? Just checking. Uh, yes, we Andy? can. Mm. All right. Without any issues now, you can see everything. Yes. Mm. All right. All right. Okay. So I work as the executive director of uh, the Philippine Reef and Rainforest Conservation Foundation. The PRCFI owns Denhugan Island. It is quite a unique model because it's a nonprofit that owns this uh, special island. And uh, this was uh, acquired in 1994 through the efforts of our founder and president, Mr. Jerry Ledesma, with the World Land Trust. So the idea was to purchase land for conservation. But however, the last uh, 10 years, the question is always how do you sustain or finance uh, conservation efforts? And um, in our experience, uh, we have developed an ecotourism program, of course, that will fuel in the conservation efforts of the NGO. Um, I say unique because uh, in our business permit, the category of the business is an ecotourism nonprofit. I know many of you um, or uh, most of us are businesses. Um, I just maybe I'll just share na in difference only with a nonprofit and a for profit is that of course in a nonprofit the 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 profit by the end of the year doesn't get divided into a board that gets paid, <clears throat> but they're all volunteers. All the people in our border volunteers. So what is the Nugan Island before I go to Actis? Um, it is a wildlife sanctuary surrounded by a marine protected area. Um, I don't know if you can see the video, but um, you can see some aerial shots of the island there. You can see seagrass beds, very important uh, uh, ecosystem. Dave, sorry, wala yeah. coming makita sa na, na video. Are you playing it? Okay, I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Let me try this one then. Sayang no kung hindi niya makita while I'm sharing. Okay, how about now? Can you see the... Yeah, we can see the image. Uh, yan, yes. We can we can see it. Alright. So, sorry, nawala ulit. Sorry. Ako lang mo, Kim. Ayan, ayan, ayan. Okay na, okay. okay. So, if nakikita niyo, yung, yung later I will show you what, what imp how important it is to have some dedicated spaces for for it's not just vegetation but really um, functional ecosystems that can sequester and store carbon you know carbon so that's also one way to um, help the climate crisis is uh, i mean to help mitigate the climate crisis is that if we continue to take care or even expand um, um, parts of our property to be basically carbon sinks no? so this can be like a small patch of a forest for example um in the Nugan, it's very unique simply because it's a non-profit it's mainly for conservation only 10 percent of the island's land um is actually developed or less less than the total area of the land is um is uh used for tourism uh practices so 90 percent of the land our forests, beach forests or mangrove forests, which are primarily uh, very important ecosystems for sequestering carbon. And um, also the seagrass, very, very important ecosystem, then the next store and sequester carbon dioxide. So let me just pause that and go back to my other. There you go. So as I've mentioned, it is triumvirate ng, ng, um, ng natural climate solutions that we can think of is, um, uh, you know, and we also measure their coverage, meaning we measure the area that they have. And if, of course, you can even go more detailed if you're really into this, you know, the, the carbon valuation, kung how much carbon is the mangrove forest really absor absorbing and the seagrass beds. This is a bit more scientific, but uh, trivia lang. These ecosystems, especially mangroves and seagrass beds, can sequester carbon or store carbon more than terrestrial forests. So that's why they are very extremely important. So um, in our data, <clears throat> we always um, make sure that we have updated data sets on like how much hectares do we have for mangroves and seagrass as well. <clears throat> Now, how do we enable authentic ecotourism in terms of um, our model of Denhugan? Um, we have this model for low volume, low impact, high quality, high value. Um, this is kami kami lang yung nag nag ano the based on our trainings with ecotourism um, um, and also conservation science. When you say low volume, you're really um, 
um, respecting carrying capacity, computing carrying capacity at the same time, um, targeting numbers of guests lower than the volume, lower than the carrying capacity, not really, not not uh, maximizing it. And then low impact means as much as possible, you're trying um, to reduce the things that you emit to the environment, which is actually uh, our goal, right? Um, as businesses, um, I expect and I assume that many of us here already have pollution control officers in our operations. So our goal is to make sure that we don't um, emit uh, pollutants uh, in the environment. High quality is because when you have low volume of guests and low impact, of course, the quality should be better. And then that means the value is higher. That means your, um, in, in our model, um, the, the rates per person is a bit, it, it's not the, the usual uh, resort rates. <clears throat> uh, Dave, sorry to interrupt again. Mm -hmm. Blank lang yung screen. Okay, let me try that again. Okay. <laughs> it's okay, it happens. <laughs> How about now? Uh, there you go, yeah. Can you there see you it? Go. Yeah. All right. So, as I've said, low volume, low impact, high quality, high value. And how do we, uh, how do we uh, implement that? So, when people want to visit in Hugan, we have this application form. So, obviously, we operate in a different way, so we can have this kind of language. But dito pa lang sa application, um, application uh, phase, we communicate it in a way that the guests, you know, don't, don't just like um, even if they have money to pay they would need to conform with the philosophy of the island meaning um, which is later on which meaning they'll practice water conservation they'll practice um, reduction of waste you know, so we are quite um, no, known um, to make sure that our guests understand if you see this uh, before filling out this form we request you to carefully read our program brochure via this link and submitting these applications means you and everyone in your group have read understood and agreed with the with the philosophy and guidelines of visiting the Nugan Island. So I think that's for us, it's a major practice because we want to make sure that every guest that comes to, to the island understand that it's a conservation site and it's it's uh, the ecotourism that we're um, implementing is to support the conservation and not the other way around. We're not doing conservation so that guests can see the island. You know, it's the other way around. We're supporting um, these ecosystems that, you know, mitigate climate change when you visit. So it in our brochure, it's, it, there's a section there called the island life it says our philosophy of travel is low impact and low volume we invite our visitors to have a meaningful experience with utmost respect for the island's ecosystems although in isolation the island is a place where we can nurture a deep connection with nature so obviously we have these uh, you have that take nothing or sorry leave no trace leave no trace philosophy which means take nothing but photos leave nothing but bubbles and kill nothing but time that's the first set of rules that we share with our guests Aside from the COVID uh, uh, social distancing, um, we also talk about food. You know? So our food is um, locally sourced and organic if possible. Um, dietary requests like vegans and vegetarians should always have options in our, uh, you know, um, in our property because um, a lot of climate conscious guests actually um, prefer plant-based um, dishes. Then, if you look at that item on fresh water, um, so we ask our guests to conserve fresh water and solar, and and also even the solar powered electricity. We we do not have air conditioned rooms, um, and there's no hot showers and Wi-Fi. So really setting the expectations of the guests, and then that we also teach them that they clean as they go. So a lot of our guests um, practice, you know, uh, you know, bringing back their dishes, for example, separating their food waste. So it's not you know even if they are paying a bit of premium they are participating in this um in, in our conservation practices we also don't allow bonfires um we don't uh, we don't allow pets uh, for bio safety because it's a sanctuary now for the details on managing water resources these are some of the practices that might be of interest to you um first is we use rainwater harvesting systems so this can be as simple as gutters in the roof that uh, feed to a cistern and then on this, this we have a cistern um, in that we also use a solar powered uh, pump to get the water from rain pumped up to a tank. And we use gravity, of course, to distribute the, the water. Another um, uh, item that we can do or you can do if, if you're an islander, if you're near the shore, is to pump salt water 
to a separate tank that feeds a separate plumbing system for flushing. So this, um, please let me know if you do have a little bit of um, um, ideas on these uh, on this. But this is what we practice just so we can save fresh water use. And third is we do ask our guests to uh, ration their use of water. So especially in our big events in our camps, we ask we we have this one bucket challenge. Um, I know it's a, a bit on um, how do you call this? Um, parang um, you know, majajay tayo or we are a bit um, worried that guests will not understand this. But in a place like this, um, we, in our briefing, it's very it's it's a very standard to discuss water water resources. Um, asking people to to limit their use or not 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 overuse their water. Although no one's watching uh, in their rooms. But it's like, okay, we're all here together. If we run out of water in the middle of the night, it means somebody has overused water. So it's like this, you know, teaching them the, the tragedy of the commons, meaning, you know, they, they are now going to be compassionate for each other because they will have to share the water resources. Um, if you're asking, we do have water runs, meaning we do transport water from the mainland. It's only because we, can, we do not have a deep well system in the island. It's a limestone island, so it's very difficult to pump up water, um, there's no water line from the mainland. So this really poses a very, very big challenge for operations. But well, in the last 10 years, um, we have been operating and uh, meeting, uh, addressing those challenges as we go. Now for, let me know, um, Andy, I have a few more items here for waste generation and problematic plastics. Of course, we comply or we should all comply with reporting on solid waste. Um, if you're a pollution control officer, it has to be a quarterly uh, self-monitoring report. Um, of course, you need to make sure that um, we need to make sure that we're uh, reporting the correct figures. Um, we're discussing with the LGU on how to manage the residual waste and where to, to, to transport it. Um, in the case of the Nhugan, um, it is an island and there is no sanitary landfill in the mainland. So it's very important for us to uh, follow the waste hierarchy, so meaning reduction is in the very top of the uh, of the of the actions. Meaning we try to reduce all the single-use plastics. So we don't allow our guests to use sachets and straws. We don't have straws on the island in our purchasing for kitchen. Everything is in bulk or supposedly um, in bulk. Um, there is no bottled water. We do educate our guests that the water that they will be getting from the uh, water stations is purified. Um, and um, there is no other way. We don't have bottled water. Of course, we do get some um, feedback on that, but we have kept um, um, uh, consistent with the um, with, with not using uh, plastic. We also uh, have because of our work with Wala Usik, which is a different campaign, but it's also under our foundation. We do have this workshop system where we can identify what waste is. And we try to reach target. We, we try to set targets of reduction, meaning we say, okay, how can we reduce, for example, this particular waste item? If not redu reducing it, but diverting it. Diverting it, meaning we don't forward it to the landfill. We find our own ways where to bring it. So whether it's a recycler or a junk shop or, uh, or any <clears throat> upcycling project, meaning we need na namin binibigay doon sa collection ng LGU, kundi hahanapan na siya ng paraan. So one, for example, is we always keep collecting styrofoam um, from the coast so that we have tried um, cleaning them and putting them as like fillers for for um, um, pillows, you know, uh, outdoor pillows or um, bean bags, bean bags, yes. And then also we, we always onboard guests on waste management awareness. We do ask our guests to participate in cleanups. Um, hindi kami na jajaya because a lot of our guests understand this and they see the problem um, with their experience that they have when they snorkel, when they trek, they see the trash on the beaches. So um, it's part of the itinerary to have them participate. Um, how do we actively protect biodiversity for climate stability? Um, very also important for us to monitor the wildlife in our in, in the island. If you are a tourism property, it would be nice to have at least uh, maybe um, a student OJTs no, who would um, from biology uh, programs to see how what birds are around um, if they're nesting uh, where are the nests you know it's funny uh, when when we when, when we had experiences like people for example see pythons you know um, in the in, in the island and um, 
you know, when when we act on that, we it's 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 interesting. We put signs on the on near the Python to say Python is sleeping or Python is nesting. Please do not disturb. <laughs> so we arrange the activities according to um, the you know the. Uh, Making sure that the wildlife is not disturbed, or their nests are not destroyed, or their, I know. And then of course, sea turtles in the beaches very um, common for us. So when we have turtle nests, interestingly, um, nakalagay din kasi yan yung estimated um, hatching date. And when there's an estimated hatching date, uh, and guess some guests know they actually book around those dates. So interesting din na madami din yung guests around those. I have asked a question in the chat if gender is related to the climate actions. We do monitor also the number of girls and women that participate in our, uh, in our, in our programs, especially for tour guiding and <clears throat> other operations um, services so that we can see you know, if you're also are hitting the targets for sustainability when it comes to gender. I think that's it for now. Please follow our social media, PRCFI, and then Hogan Island. I'm happy to discuss <clears throat> if you have any questions. Thank you. Back to you, Andy. Thank you so much, Dave, for that uh, wonderful presentation. Ayan, we've received so many tips already for our hotel and mice businesses. So one thing uh, that we can do is to have different parts of our properties to be small carbon sink. So I think that really stresses the importance of um, uh, having that uh, small area in our properties. Um, Siguro kahit uh, urban tayo or rural uh, properties, okay lang naman siguro to have that um, area, right? Uh, and also to have rainwater systems. And I really like the idea of uh, guests conforming to the philosophies of the island, like uh, clean as they go, segregation at source, uh, and also waste management awareness. So uh, thank you so much for that uh, enriching presentation, Dave. Um, I really hope that we can instill that same um, advocacy uh, in, uh, in different uh, kinds of organizations, like uh, in our staff as well, in our personnel. So I think this is something that our next speaker can also tackle more. Uh, so for example, uh, Brenda's uh, segment will be increasing capacity and knowledge foundation of staff, uh, specifically strengthening staff knowledge on sustainable consumption and production. So, um, Brenda graduated BS, uh, uh, sorry, Bachelor of Science Chemical Engineering from Batangas University. So currently she is pursuing her professional career as program officer in PSEPSTI under the National Eco Labeling Program, Green Choice Philippines. And she also aspires to promote sustainability and to provide innovative solutions that will protect the environment. So everyone, please welcome Ms. Brenda Butardo. So Brenda, you have the floor. Good afternoon, everyone. So, um, share lang po ako ng screen. Okay. There you go. Uh, kita na po ang screen? Yes, we can see your screen. Okay. Okay. Um, so good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for this opportunity to actually share my knowledge about sustainable consumption and production. And just to give you a little background about myself, I am Brenda Butardo, a uh, uh, program officer of PSEPSD, specifically in Green Choice Philippines. So for this webinar about climate action and tourism, I will introduce to you uh, sustainable consumption and production. And uh, at the end of my presentation, I hope I will be able to strengthen your knowledge about SCP. So next one, um, just to introduce our organization, we are a Philippine Center for Environmental Protection and Sustainable Development Incorporated. And we are the secretariat or administrator of National Eco-Labeling Program, Green Choice Philippines. And as you can see, and based from the name of our organization, uh, we advocate for sustainability and environmental protection. And one of the goals of our organization is to really promote circular economy and sustainable development goals through sustainable consumption and production as an approach in achieving a sustainable society. Then 
I have here our program. So we have NELP, GCP, or Green Choice Philippines, uh, the, e the only eco-label here in the Philippines. And this is one of the tools utilized by the organization to promote sustainable consumption and production. Next one is Philippine Green Pages. It aims to guide the Filipino society in choosing which local products and services that poses minimum risk to environmental health. And we have a Philippine Forest Certification System that aims to establish sustainable forest management and chain of custody standards in the Philippines to revitalize the local forest industry. And for our projects, we have capacity building on timber legality towards uh, achieving sustainable forest management. We also have sustainable diner for sustainable tourism, green public procurement for Quezon City and sustainable packaging towards marine litter reduction. And of course, the most recent one and uh, is about to end is the Transforming Tourism Value Chains Project. Uh, organized or facilitated by PSEPSTI. And hopefully there will be more projects to come. Uh, that's it for the introduction of our organization. And moving forward, let's talk about uh, sustainable consumption and production. Uh, I guess everyone here is familiar with 17 um, sustainable development goals and in line with the targets of our organization, we highly promote SDG 12 or responsible or sustainable consumption and production. So the main target for this is to ensure sustainable consumption and production patterns. It is also about really doing more and better with less and aligned with the target are these objectives. We have decoupling economic growth from environmental degradation increasing resource efficiency and promoting sustainable lifestyle. And further, based from the definition of UNEP, uh, SCP is the use of services and related products which respond to basic needs while minimizing the use of natural resources and toxic materials as well as the emissions of waste and pollutants over the life cycle of the service or product so as not to jeopardize the needs of future generations. And to better illustrate the meaning of this, I'll explain to you the concept of decoupling and life cycle approach. So as you can see, I have here the graph which illustrates the idea of doing more and better with less. Doing more and better uh, in terms of the quality of life and economic value and while minimizing the resource use and at the same time lowering the environmental impact. But how can we actually do that? How can we actually do more and better with less? Of course, by changing our usual behavior and patterns of consumption and production. So that's basically the concept of decoupling. Then we have here the life cycle approach. Um, it identifies opportunities and risks of a product or services all the way from uh, raw materials acquisition up to its disposal. And this is also about uh, increasing the sustainable management of resources and resource efficiency along the life cycle of a product. And it will help to halt and possibly reverse some of the damaging trends in our environment. But probably this approach this life cycle approach won't solve all environmental problems or challenges, but through this, we can find sustainable ways and we can divert or shift uh, the mindset of the community in a life cycle perspective. So for my next slide, we have I have here the consumption and production drivers. My question now is where SCP opportunities come into the equation? As you can see here, um, among these factors, there are uh, direct linkage. So uh, as the population grows, the economic value grows, as well as the lifestyle and resource use, and of course, the pollution intensity increases as well, thereby resulting into higher impacts to the environment in the climate, biodiversity, human health, scarcity, and poverty. 
and that's where SCP opportunities came. So among uh, these opportunities will will target this last three: the life si lifestyle, uh, the usage of resources, and of course, in the pollution intensity. This is where we can maximize the potential of the tools and practices of sustainable consumption and production. So I have here the, the tools and practices of sustainable consumption and production. Um, Eco-labeling, life cycle assessment, eco-design, uh, cleaner production or green productivity, green procurement, sustainability reporting or corporate social responsibility and environmental management systems. Mm, there are numerous tools to be used to promote SCP, but doing this alone cannot fully guarantee the success of the implementation of SCP. This is, these are just initial steps to make it work. And after all, uh, SCP requires cooperation among stakeholders in different sectors across the country. So uh, just an overview for uh, of the tools and practices of SCP. The first one is the environmental management system. This is actually a framework that helps the organization to achieve its environmental goals through consistent review, evaluation, and improvement of its environmental performance. Um, this is basically a framework that can provide assurance to company management, stakeholders, and employees that the environmental impact are being measured and improved. Next one is eco-design. Eco-design is not just a simple way of developing a product. This requires uh, life cycle thinking. So this is actually the integration of environmental aspects into the product development process by balancing ecological and economic requirements. Next one is the resource efficiency and cleaner production. This is actually um, application of integrated preventive environmental strategy to increase efficiency and reduce risks to humans and the environment. It actually aims to facilitate uh, an industry to shift towards a circular economy in which waste prevention is the first priority. And for the next one, we have sustainability reporting. I think this is most common in uh, hotel and in, in the tourism industry where we monitor uh, or report publicly on its significant uh, economic, environmental, and or social impacts. It, and of course, in accordance with globally accepted standards. And we generate, uh, in sustainability reporting, we generate data and measure progress. And of course, it's, co uh, its contribution towards global sustainable development objectives. And next, is the life cycle assessment. Uh, as you all know, we are very familiar with the uh, line, uh, for every action, there is a reaction. The same thing with consumption and production, that every consumption and production process, there is an effect on the environment. Good thing um, we have life cycle assessment in which we can evaluate and assess the environmental impact of any goods, products, or services throughout its life. It actually gives a more um, accurate picture of the in environmental trade-offs during product and process selection. So next is the greening the supply chain. This is basically integrating uh, environmental or life cycle thinking into a supply chain chain management. So we incorporate those considerations as a criteria in 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 the decision making, either in personal or decisions or business decisions. Next one is the green procurement. This is the act of buying products and services where environmental considerations are included as a basis of the decision. So in the Philippines, we have green 
Public Procurement Policy and the GPPBTSO or the um, uh, they released a roadmap for uh, the Philippines advancing GPP into 20, until 2022 and beyond. And the strategy of this GPP in the Philippines is to really integrate green practices um, harmoniously into the existing procurement processes and procuring uh, procuring items with green specifications are actually strong signals to the suppliers, vendors, distributors to venture into uh, green enterprises and hoping na, uh, na in in the future uh, future years we get to market our um, our country as a green market. And lastly is the eco-labeling. So this is the practice of putting a label to a product or service which identifies the overall environmental preference of within a specific product. So in the Philippines, we have Green Choice Philippines, which is, uh, of course, administered by uh, Pesepsi, and it's a member of Global Eco-Labeling Network. And reiterate ko lang po that uh, Green Choice Philippines is the only eco label here in the Philippines. And with the product or service criteria developed uh, by this program, anyone who is willing to be certified must undergo a series of assessments and product evaluations. And now, my question uh, the question is how can we really help the tourism sector? What is the role of PSEPSD specifically? Uh, National Eco Labeling Program Green Choice Philippines in advocating sustainability in the tourism sector. So, so of course, aside from this TVC project, uh, advocacy to accelerate a uh, more resource efficient and low carbon economy, GCP has been helping the tourism sector by certifying food service establishments. And with a given opportunity to have the criteria, for food service establishments in the previous Sustainable Diner project, spearheaded by Worldwide Fund for Nature Philippines, we were able to award uh, four food service establishments, namely Veranda Restaurant at the Alvista Hotel, uh, Pico Restaurant at Pico de Loro, San Coral Cafe at Pico de Loro, and Anzani New Mediterranean Cuisine. And uh, basically, the focus of this criteria is to provide a safe and healthy meals for their customers or guests and to reduce the waste generated and the resource consumed by the tourism industry. And of course, uh, we give considerations to the innovative first performance of these establishments and um, uh, another considerations are based on the food quality and the nutrition, uh, environmental management system, and of course, resource efficiency. And, and before I actually end my presentation, uh, I know this is a, uh, a little bit technical, but I'd like to add some of my personal insights. As someone who really advocates for um, sustainability, I hope that every time we make a decision, we should see things in a life cycle perspective and we should not take everything for granted. So that's it for my presentation. Thank you for everyone. Please do check our website and if you have inquiries, please email us at greenchoicephilippines at pesepsd.org.ph. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much for that, Brenda. So again, lots of uh, Pesepsi initiatives that different businesses can uh, participate in to kickstart their journey, not just for employees, but also for uh, our individual lifestyles as well. So these are uh, the basic SCP concepts that we can remember to also inform us on our purchasing decisions and how these can affect our uh, environment. So thank you as well, Brenda, for sharing the criteria on food service establishments. Um, I hope this encourages our businesses, our restaurants to apply for the GCP seal to recognize their efforts on environmental management. So again, 
Um, actually, our last speaker for step two, who will tackle a more uh, specific way of practicing SCP. So one example of a circular approach, which hotels and mice can uh, surely apply in their operations, which is repurposing food waste in the tourism sector. So um, Ms. Rina engaged in the business of waste diversion and resource transformation uh, and strongly advocates that it's time that we stop sending our food waste to the landfills. So having been trained as a climate reality leader by Al Gore in 2016 and completing a soil advocate course with international group Kiss the Ground, she ventured into the unending search for soil mates. A soil mate is committed to the act of composting food waste to contribute to regenerating the planet through reducing GHG emissions from landfills, returning more carbon in the soil, and promoting soil health everywhere. So um, everyone, please welcome Ms. Rina. Uh, Ms. Rina, you have the floor. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Paul. So are you able to see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen, Paul. OK. Again, good afternoon to everyone, and thank you for um, inviting me here to share with you this afternoon and uh, share with you what we do in green space. So we're talking tourism, we're talking new destinations, and that's what we do in green space, but actually it's about creating new destinations for food waste and new purpose for food waste. Uh, I've heard a lot of mention about waste management, um, food waste composting. So that would be the focus of uh, my sharing for today. And um, uh, what, how, how or what uh, we can do in, the, in this industry so we could also impact in lessening food waste going to the landfills. Um, actually, even looking at um, our DOT site, no, we're seeing that we're encouraged to explore the country while practicing sustainability. And when we think of exploring the country, so new places, new destinations, laging kasama food. So diba, I'm sure anyone here who has um, uh, been promoting their their um, destinations, laging gusto nating ibida. What's the best food? to eat no or ano yung mas showcase nyo na, na local delicacies but uh, anyway with that traveling uh, comes with food and um, with food uh, it's inevitable there's always going to be food waste so it would be in the form of food scraps coming from the kitchen all the kitchen uh, scraps from preparation and all the leftovers and in fact uh, I'd like to share with you that um, there was a study conducted by WWF and I heard it was already mentioned earlier as well that One Planet um, in this project uh, or in this study uh, looking at two hotels in a span of four months they've collected a total of close to 100,000 kilograms of food waste so you, you're seeing in the screen 98,319 and two months of collection without any intervention and then another two months with intervention. But 98,000, it's close to 100,000. That's how much food waste is being generated. Imagine, you know, just, that's just four months, you know, and two hotels. So we can get all the hotels and all the resorts and destinations with, with all the food waste is being generated. And in this study, you can actually look for, uh, you, you, I mean, this study is available online. Um, there's a PDF version that you can download and look through the details, but I'm just focusing on the, the amount of food waste generated. And also, there's really something we can do about this. We can lower it. And if you can see, uh, there's a baseline number showing 437 kilograms, and then after intervention, 415. So the food waste per cover was decreased after interventions and these interventions included studying the different sources or where are the food waste generated. So, so purchasing ba, uh, are we purchasing too much? Are food expiring? Is there a uh, need to adjust in the preparation? Is it in the serving? So all those things not thinning then um, from, from start until the things that are being disposed and then um, yung mga practices, uh, 
that they need to improve or um, adapt into the system. So after intervention, there's a decrease uh, to 415 kilograms per cover. So meaning there really is something we can do to minimize uh, our food waste, not completely eliminated. There are unavoidable food waste, but uh, then again, with when it comes to unavoidable food waste, yun na yung pag-uusapan natin na what do we do with it? We don't throw it to the landfill. Sabi nga in, a, uh, in this data of uh, the composition of municipal solid waste in the Philippines, more than half is bio-waste. And in that 52% of bio-waste that's being generated, 86.2% um, is actually food waste. So we're throwing away so much food waste. And there are a lot of solutions that we can do. In the Sustainable Diner program of, of WWF, they've discussed um, the, the ways, the different ways that we can minimize our food waste. And it starts from uh, prevention. And then if there's surplus that are still uh, useful, that can, it can be donated. There are a lot of... Um, organizations now who are taking care of this surplus food para magpadala sa, to those who are in need. And then the last thing, if there's still something that has to be thrown away, we can keep them away from, from the landfills by composting them. And there was a mention of SDG 12 earlier. SDG um, 12, point, uh, I mean, uh, one indicator under SDG 12 under SDG 12.3 is actually for about global food loss and waste. So uh, we're looking at food loss, the food loss index, food waste index. So there's uh, really an impact when we're trying to contribute to the achievement of this SDG 12. I know when we put focus on what do we do with food waste. <clears throat> so for green space, the goal really is to help you make the change from land fillers to land healers. So we're already talking about this part of the, of, of parang after you've um, prevented generating waste, but now we have waste that we still have to dispose. We don't want it to end in landfills. So we wanna compost it and really want uh, for every household, for every business to shift to a composting lifestyle para hindi na natin yan yeah, adds the pollution that we generate in landfills. We can avoid all the methane being created dito mga food waste ito in, in uh, our landfills. And to start, uh, in another project uh, in partnership with WWF, we actually produced a video that we want to share with you and uh, we will share you the link so you can also share this within your um, organization within your company and your network, your communities. So we really want everyone to think of, of food, think of food waste and not throw them away because they're a valuable resource in disguise. We look at it as, as waste, but we're, we're actually wasting it because we can bring it back uh, to the soil, make healthier soil and improve uh, the health of the planet. So I'll be sharing with you now a with this video that we created. We launched this in September 20, uh, September 29, during the uh, International Day of Awareness of Food Loss and Waste. So hang on, I'll shift to the video. Naalala mo pa ba ang palaging sinasabi ng nanay mo noon? Huwag ka magtira ng kanin sa plato mo ha. Pinaghirapan niya ng mga magsasaka. Narinig ko na rin yan. Kasunod pa nga niyan, maswerte ka nakakakain ka ng tatlong beses sa isang araw. Maraming batang nagugutong. Lumaki tayo na malaking kasalanan ang magsayang ng pagkain. Kung ganun, bakit ito ang nangyayari ngayon? Sa buong mundo, may 2.2 bilyong toniladang pagkain ang tinatapon at nasasayang taon-taon. At ang nakakalungkot, kahit na milyong-milyong Pilipino ang nagugutom, 
Nasa 300,000 na toneladang kanin ang nasasayang kada taon sa Pilipinas. Sa Metro Manila pa lang, lampas 2,000 toneladang food waste na ang itinatapon araw-araw. At napakalaki ng epekto nito sa mundo. Lahat ng hindi napapakinabang ang pagkain, basta lang natin tinatapon sa basurahan, ay napupunta sa gabundok na landfills kung saan ito tuluyang nabubulok. Kasama ng iba pang basura, namamaho ang mga nabubulok na pagkain at nagpo-produce ng tinatawag nating methane gas. Ang methane ay isang uri ng greenhouse gas na lalong nagpapatindi sa global warming na nararanasan ng buong mundo. Mas matindi pang araw ito kesa sa carbon dioxide. Methane gas, carbon dioxide, greenhouse effect, global warming. Pamilyar na tayo sa mga salitang ito. Dahil kakabit sila ng isa sa pinakamalaking problema ng ating henerasyon, ang climate change. O, oh, di ba? Kung iisipin mo, nang dahil lang sa hindi nauubos na pagkain na itinapon sa basurahan, hindi mo namamalayan na nagko-contribute ka na pala sa paglalat ng climate crisis. Kaya kailangan natin ng solusyon para sa lumalaking problema natin sa food waste. Paano nga ba natin ulit mapapakinabangan ang tira-tira nating pagkain? Ang sagot ay... Nasa lupa! Sa lupa? Oo, sa lupa. Kasi pwede natin itong gawing cycle. Ang lupa na nagbibigay sa atin ng pagkain, bibigyan din natin ng nutrients para maging... Hashtag Healthy Soil! Yan ang composting. Ang composting ay paraan ng pag -re recycle ng food waste para mapakinabangang muli ng lupa ang nutrients galing sa mga tira nating pagkain. Kapag naging successful ang composting mo, may DIY organic fertilizer ka na, nakatulong ka pang mabawasan ang nabubulok ng basura sa mga landfills. Merong iba't ibang methods ng composting tulad ng traditional o yung pagbabaon ng food waste sa malalim na hukay o yung mga ginagawa natin ng mga bata pa tayo. Number two, vermicomposting o yung paggamit ng composting worms para kainin nila ang tira-tira nating pagkain. O ba diba, give and take lang. At number three, bukashi composting o yung pagferment ng food waste para maging DIY organic fertilizer. Nakadepende sa lifestyle mo kung anong method ang bagay sa iyo. Pero para sa ating mga busy sa buhay at trabaho, perfect sa atin ang Bukashi Composting. Ilalagay lang sa food waste bucket ang mga tirang pagkain, lalagyan ng Bukashi brand at tatakpan for two weeks. After nun, ihahalo na siya sa lupa at pwede nang gawing pataba. O ba? Diba? walang kahasil-hasil pero napakalaki ng impact sa ating planeta. Bukod sa nababawasan ang methane gas na nagmumula sa landfills na isa sa nagiging cause ng global warming, nagkakaroon din ng pagkain ang ating lupa para maging hashtag healthy soil for our farmers or even for our plantitos and plantitas just like you and me. Present! So baka ito na ang sagot sa paalala ng mga nanay natin tungkol sa pagsasayang ng pagkain. Kasi sa composting, Walang food na magiging waste. Walang masasayang dahil ibabalik natin sa lupa ang sustansya na ibinigay nito sa atin. Kaya samahan nyo kami. Samahan nyo kami sa less wasteful na kinabukasan. Samahan nyo kami sa pag-aalaga sa ating kalikasan. Samahan nyo kami sa pag-produce ng hashtag healthy soil. At samahan nyo kaming gawing parte ng ating bahay at buhay ang composting. Dahil sa pinagsama-sama nating lakas, planeta natin ay kayang-kaya nating iligtas. Okay, so yan ang ating kwentong compost. <clears throat> And uh, to this video, uh, we're, we're hoping na mas parami pang tao no? would really look into composting and stop sending food waste to the landfill. Okay, let me just go back to my slide.
you can check out the video in YouTube. Uh, look for um, w WWF Philippines or Green Space Filipinas and look for Quentong Compost and then watch it again and share it to your family, your friends, and your community para mas marami pang matuto about the value of composting. So for Green Space, we're saying no, create new destinations for food waste and it starts at source, at the source. So uh, for, for our businesses, we have a lot of food waste. So kung dating sa garbage bag siya napupunta, we want to put them in composting bins in, in Bohashi buckets so that we can send it for proper composting instead of mixing all our food waste with all the other waste. And then instead of landfills, we want to be able to bring them to composting sites. So um, I'll be sharing with you one of our partner composting sites. And then eventually, it could be something that you can set up in your own site, a machine that can turn compost in, I mean, turn food waste into compost in 24 hours. So if we can process one ton of food waste every day, so mas marami tayong madadivert away from the landfill. And of course, the new purpose of food waste, hindi na siya pollution, it won't anymore cause um, and create methane in landfills. Instead, it's going to be compost and it's going to be used in urban gardens, organic farms, and such. So I'd like to share with you, ano ba yung gagawin in terms of collecting the food waste? So this... Uh, uh, while I'm sharing you this video, this is uh, the Bukashi Composting Program in Taal Vista Hotel. So we we have trained uh, the folks from, from the kitchen, the stewards, kung ano gagawin nila sa, sa compost. And this is what you would do with your food waste. So you, instead of just throwing them into the bin, uh, following the Bukashi method, you will be using this Bukashi bucket and yung nakikita nyo ngayon, that's the Bokashi brand. The Bokashi brand uh, contains live beneficial microorganisms. So you layer your food waste inside the bucket. Um, Bokashi is actually a Japanese term. It means fermented organic matter. So what we're doing inside the bucket is we're fermenting the food waste. So instead of rotting, hindi na siya mabubulok, no? mabubulo siya makaferment. <clears throat> Why do we want to ferment the food waste? Kasi while, while collecting it, in a, in a bucket this way, uh, the fermentation process will prevent uh, other causing gases na napoproduce in when food rots, pag nabubulak yung food waste. Kaya, when, in this process, we layer the food waste. So, yun you nakita nyo, no? you, you put a layer of, of um, you put a layer of food waste and then sprinkle it with, with Bokashi brand hanggang sa mapuno yung buckets nyo. Then once the bucket is full and if you have the space like for Tal Vista Hotel and it's the same for Pico de Loro, what we did is we, we taught them how to do it and then since they have the space to do their own composting, they actually have one setup. This is also in Tal Vista Hotel. So they have composting bins. You know, even without, without Bukashi, you can uh, always just bury your food waste and and it will compost, but it would take a while, no? Maybe six to twelve months. And sometimes they they avoid putting in yung mga leftovers, kasi yun yung nagkakos na bumaho or it attract pests. And if pero if it's fermented with Bukashi brand, the whole composting process would be much quicker instead of waiting six to twelve months. In four to six weeks, you have compost now. So in this portion, it's another um, layering method. And all. Now they layer the bucket, the buckets of food waste. So the, I mean the fermented food waste, layer it with their yard waste, with soil, and then leave it there to, to compost. If you have the, the space and you can do the whole steps no, from collection until uh, the final composting stage, then that would be great. We can help you. Um, how to learn how to do the Bukashi composting and provide you with the materials. That's uh, and that's something you can set up in your own space. But uh, for those who are unable to <clears throat> do the whole step, especially the composting part, if you feel like you don't have the space, you don't have the time, or for whatever reason, 
uh, Greensbridge is also offering composting services. And with these composting services, all you have to do is following the Mukashi method, collect all your food waste inside the bucket, and then we'll take the buckets from you and we'll be the one to compost it. So wala na yung dapat tayong excuse na hindi makapag-compost kasi if we can't do it, let us do it for you just to make sure that none of it end in a landfill. And for us to be able to cater to more and uh, make it uh, more accessible to more people and make it much easier for people to um, uh, get their bucket exchange for, for a new one. We also have an app, an app a mobile app, which is another project with WWF Philippines. So with the help of WWF Philippines, we were able to develop an app where uh, you can actually book your bucket exchange. So once you have an account, just go to your app and then let us know how many buckets or how, how many drums are full so we can exchange it. What happens in the exchange is all of the full buckets will take them from you and then we'll leave you with clean, empty buckets and also replenish the Bokashi plan that you use in layering the food waste. Um, here's another quick video on how we use that. Yeah, so this is now the new lifestyle. No more land filling. Uh, sab natin circular economy from, from the source. We bring the food waste for composting and then it's used in urban gardens, organic farms. And then probably you could be buying back all the, the harvest from the farm where your food waste were used. So I'll just piece through the next slides. I think my time's up. Mark in. Uh, also from the um, SM group of SM hotels and convention centers. No? Since this is a park in, in North Edsad, they do not have the space, so they're subscribed to the services. And we started in December of 2021. Uh, close to five tons of food waste na yung, yung na that divert through the bucket exchange program. We also tried um, before the pandemic, actually, we, we had a pilot with SMX Convention Center. So imagine just in one month, uh, coming out of 14 Christmas events at the SMX Convention Center in Amoa and SM Aura, <clears throat> we're able to divert 1.2 tons. So every time you have an event, there's catering, there's food. Kahit pa konti konting food waste, pero if you look at it after a month, naka isang tonelada ng food waste na pala kayo. So really, you, you can focus on diverting all, the, all those food waste. It would be a lot of help. And just in September of 2022, um, FEU, through their uh, Institute of Tourism and Hospitality Management, uh, started their composting program as well. So they're incorporating it uh, in Cafe Alfredo and teaching um, and doing the uh, co collect food waste collection in buckets in all their kitchen labs and we're sharing with the students and hopefully from, from what they're le learning in school, kahit saan sila maharating, alam na nila na they're not supposed to throw food waste away and it should be composted. And uh, where will the food waste go? One of our partners is Caliraya Farm. So instead of landfills, it goes on organic farm. These farmers, they, they work and um, a part, part of their daily activities would be composting the food waste. And more than composting, we visit the farm and those composts are, used in, are also used in planting trees so we can support reforestation in Caliraya. <clears throat> and uh, it, it helps in the livelihood, you know. This, this uh, folks, ang pinagkakabuhayan nila before would be uh, pangangahoy, pag-uuling, so there's illegal logging involved, you know? kaya yung, yung bundok, nauubos na yung, yung mga puno, but uh, 
uh, with the uh, efforts of Kaliraya Farms, at least seven families have converted from such kind of livelihood. They're now farmers in Kaliraya Farm doing organic farming and composting. So if uh, we can divert more food waste and then more farms can actually make use of the compost to improve their, their uh, soil and improve the livelihood of the people around the community. And lastly, just want to share that these are all the plants that we're currently serving. And uh, since we started, we've already diverted over 53,000 kilograms of food waste away from landfills. And it's coming from uh, close to 200 um, soil mates. So we've completed over 4,000 bucket exchanges. And so we're inviting you if there's a challenge uh, in composting and you think this service, this service could be something of help, uh, please reach out. You can uh, reach us through any of our social media pages, uh, Facebook, email, uh, even Instagram. So again, uh, inviting everyone, it's very urgent and very important. We all need to make this change from land fillers to land healers. So thank you. Uh, thank you so much for that, Ms. Reina, and for um, being a guest speaker again uh, on one of our on our one of our Percepts Day workshops. So we're really glad to have you um, here with us again. Uh, thank you also for sharing that case study as well on food waste management from WWF. Uh, now that we know 86% of our bio waste is actually food waste, so uh, we really need to address this however we can. And um, imagine we've already identified majority of the problem of bio waste. So I hope more organizations and families can um, think about uh, um, eliminating their food waste this way. So I also loved watching the videos. So thank you so much for sharing that. And everyone, please do share this to your communities. Uh, Kwentong Compost is on YouTube. So please do check that out. So again, thank you so much, Ms. Rina. Um, so to be able to keep with the time, we will go straight to the last steps, which is uh, check and act. So um, for our third and fourth step, this is where we usually monitor efficiency initiatives, reporting measurements, and ensure continuous improvement by incorporating energy and sustainability activities into business operations. So specifically, our speaker will tackle sustainability reporting in the tourism sector. So engineer Edmond Maki Maceda is a sustainability professional with over 30 years of experience in corporate ESG strategy, academic program development, and sustainability consulting. He graduated with, uh, from Stanford University in 1992 with a master's degree in environmental engineering after obtaining his bachelor's degree in chemical engineering from the University of the Philippines in 1989. So um, engineer Maceda's long career history includes key roles as a sustainability consultant for uh, La Salle Animo uh, Labs Foundation, sustainability technical expert for the Climate Change Commission, sustainability director of Enderon Colleges, uh, sustainability consultant to the chairman of Mega World Corporation, sustainability officer of Ayala Land, uh, vice president for environmental affairs of the Phil Estate Group, uh, he was also Director for Environmental Consulting Services of SGV and Co. And an overseas stint as Professional Engineer with Montgomery Watson Consulting Engineers in California. So he has hosted, facilitated, and spoken at numerous sustainability summits, green conferences, co uh, corporate trainings, and related events. Uh, and Engineer Maceda recently began serving as Senior Environmental Consultant for the City of Bacolod. So, Everyone, please welcome Engineer Ma uh, Maceda. Now, uh, Sir Maki, you have the floor. Thank you, Andy, and good afternoon to everyone. Uh, I'll try to compress my talk into 10 minutes, so we'll have more time for the open forum later. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And let me start with the question of check. No, When you say check, who is checking who? So... I heard earlier mention of a pollution control officer. Just wanted to show you that in my previous experience with Ayala Land, um, there was a board level sustainability committee, as you see on the screen. So it's a three member committee within the larger board of directors who is overseeing the CEO, who is also overseeing the sustainability team, 
who is also overseeing all the sustainability leads in all of the business development units. And under each of these uh, you know, boxes below are the facilities managers and below them are the pollution control officers. So first question is who is checking who? So in my experience, uh, if, uh, if it goes all the way up to the board, in the corporate setting then it works no but if it only reaches up to the mid level then uh, your your planning and your doing is is not really getting checked properly now for for those lgs who are here again uh who, who reports to who and the the bottom line is that the highest level executive has to be on top of things in in lgs case it should be the mayor or if it's the province, it should be the governor. All right, just wanted to get that out of the way and move to my next slide. Uh, I was asked to speak about sustainability reporting. I just wanted to give a heads up to everyone here, uh, especially the business uh, establishments, tourism establishments. If you're a corporation, uh, go beyond compliance at this stage. You're not right now. Uh, unless you're a publicly listed corporation, you are not required to submit a sustainability report to the SEC. But if you are a corporation, then pretty soon you will be. I, I highlighted here, the SEC noted that it is also looking to introduce sustainability reporting among unlisted companies on a comply or explain basis with the mandatory approach adopted sometime in the future. So what, what we're seeing here is that the SEC made it uh, uh, a requirement for publicly listed companies through this SEC memo circular number four for publicly listed companies on a comply or explain basis, which means if you cannot uh, submit certain types of information, you just have to explain why you can't. But this SEC memo is already ending this year. So starting next year, all public listed companies will already be Man mandated to submit, no more comply or explain. And following that same strategy, um, unlisted companies, basically all registered uh, corporations uh, registered with the SEC will then be uh, uh, directed to submit sustainability reports on a comply or explain basis. Uh, in the interest of time, we won't go through all of this. Uh, I'll just share this in the, uh, in the chat box. So this is the SEC memo. I, I encourage everyone to go through it. Uh, we can just, uh, you know, pasadaan lang natin, konting browse lang. So it explains uh, what sustainability and sustainable reporting is. It, uh, it explains uh, the different standards across the world that are being used, GRI, IR, SASB, TCFD. Um, and it gives you, actually, it gives you a checklist, you know, a template that you can use. Talks about the benefits, about the principles of materiality, uh, framework in the Philippines, different topics you have to disclose on, economic, social, and environmental. And as I said, Annex A here provides a uh, checklist simple that you can uh, easily uh, use or, or tailor based on your operations. There it is, the Annex A reporting template. And it also provides an Annex B, a guide to the reporting. So uh, key things to remember here in reporting is for each of the indicators, whether it's economic, environmental, or social, what is the impact and where does it occur? What is the organization's involvement in the impact? which stakeholders are, are affected. And most importantly, this is where a lot of companies have difficulty, the management approach. It's the narrative that you have to write down. What are your policies, commitments, goals and targets, etc.? And what initiatives uh, have you started to manage this particular topic? So it goes all the way down to climate-related risks and opportunities, procurement, anti-corruption, incidents of corruption, all of that for economic, for environment, it's resource management, reduction of energy consumption. And again, you have to go through this uh, matrix. So where, where is the impact? What is the organization's involvement in the impact? Which stakeholders are affected and management approach? 
water consumption is under environmental materials used by the organization, ecosystems and biodiversity, environmental impact management, air emissions, air pollutants, solid and hazardous wastes, et cetera, et cetera. Under social, Actually, in my experience in sustainability reporting, it's the social component of sustainability that has the most disclosures. It includes uh, employee hiring and benefits, employee training and development, labor management relations, diversity and equal opportunity, workplace conditions, labor standards and human rights, supply chain management, significant impacts on local communities, customer satisfaction, health and safety, marketing and labeling, customer privacy, data security, and your, your product or service contribution to the UN SDGs is also disclosed as a separate section in your report. And here's the topic guide. So if, if you go through this, there's also a uh, Word document that you can easily download from, from that SEC website that gives you the, the same Annex A in Word format. So you can easily plug in uh, all your information. All right. Now, when it comes to the tourism sector, we start with the global and then to the regional and then to the Philippine setting. For global, uh, the best uh, source would be the Global Sustainable Tourism Council. And what I like about this, uh, uh, this organization is it provides standards or criteria for hotels and accommodations, right? So you can get your industry criteria for hotels here can download hotel criteria and, and uh, performance indicators. And you will see that everything you need to know as a hotel uh, would be covered in this particular set of standards. If you're an LGU, there is also a criteria for LGU. Back. for destinations and governments, get destination criteria. For tourism policy makers, the LGU, get framework for government policy makers. In the sign-up sheet, I also saw some tour operators. And again, there's criteria for tour operators, right? So on the global level, I recommend that everyone uh, just uh, follow this link. I'll again, share it on the chat box. Okay. Now, to the regional level, most of you may have heard of the ASEAN Green Hotel Awards. Uh, this is an ongoing program. Uh, the awards are given uh, every two years. And uh, we go to this section of the standard. Again, so for... There are 11 major criteria that you have to report on, uh, including environmental policy and actions for hotel operation, use of green products, collaboration with the community and local organizations, human resource development, solid waste management, energy efficiency, water efficiency and water quality, air quality management, both indoor and outdoor, noise pollution control, wastewater treatment and management, and toxic and chemical substance disposal management. All right, so again, let me share this with everyone in the chat box. Now, uh, the latest update on the ASEAN Green Awards, Green Hotel Awards, is that some hotels were uh, given the award and some cities actually also were given the awards. So awardees for the ASEAN Clean Tourist Cities for 2022 include the cities of Baguio and Ilagan in Isabela. 
as far as hotels, Nobu Hotel, Nuwa Hotel, Hyatt Regency in Conrad, Manila, also recognized as among the best. Uh, in terms of mice, uh, Manila Conrad Manila's Forbes Ballroom was included in the top five of ASEAN Mice Venue Award. Quest Plus Conference Center Clark's Magellan Ballroom and Baguio Country Club's William Cameron Forbes Ballroom were also recognized among the top five of the Mice Awards. And also Astoria Palawan's Mangrove Conference and Convention Center and Waidus Marriott Grand Ballroom were also recognized. Let me just uh, give you some uh, personal uh, experiences as far as MICE is concerned. No? I've been to many meetings and conferences. The first thing that uh, many people would notice that would be you know, unsustainable would be the temperature inside the ballroom or the meeting room. If it's too cold, then that means you're already wasting energy. The... Uh, the recommended set point, which is comfortable for the tropical climate, is 24 degrees. So I've seen, I've, I've been in several conferences where someone actually spoke up and said, this is supposed to be a meeting on sustainability, but why is it so cold? We're wasting energy. So the hotel manager had to be called in to increase the set point, uh, to increase the temperature. I've also been to many conferences and uh, and seminars where once you get a seat, you already have a, a bottle of water, some uh, hotel paper and a pencil. You know, we're, we're living in the, the age of sustainability now. So these are basic things that should not be included anymore. You know, there should be, a, you know, I've, I've, I've been to uh, conferences where they have a nice uh, uh, jug or clear container of uh, some fruit infused water and everyone just gets a glass and gets from that no need for bottled water anymore avoid single use plastics again in this day and age where we we don't we hardly use paper and pencil anymore uh, maybe you can just uh, you know have a small stock somewhere uh, that people can go to if they need it but again the practice of having individual you know uh, pieces of paper in front of you when you sit down on the on, on the table that should be uh, avoided. Na. Uh, I've also seen uh, conferences where they have clearly marked uh, waste bins, uh, recyclable food waste, etc., and clearly designated. And but long story short, if we are gonna have green events then the best way is that when even early on when you're sending your invitations you already notify the attendees or the registrants that this will be a green event so they they can already expect that this will be different it will be uh the, the the organizer is being true to sustainability so it's the messaging also that counts it's not just the actual uh, practices or um uh, infrastructure within the the mice event that you need to look into, but also the messaging. And the earlier you convey that message to the to the registrants, the better. All right. Now, yeah. Once you have your ASEAN Green Hotel Award, then you can already uh, brag about it, and that will help you uh, build up your brand as being responsible. Now, on the Philippine uh, level. Uh, there was uh, the, what the so-called Anahao Philippine Sustainable Tourism Certification. Unfortunately, uh, the group uh, that was uh, doing the mechanics and the uh, the trainings for this, uh, it's uh, European Union funded, and their funding ran out in in 2020. So I think this this program is still there with with DOT, but I don't think it's uh, actually. Uh, <clears throat> operational at the moment i i invite all of you to go and check with them if they're still doing this but in 2018 they were able to award 27 hotels and resorts resorts all over the philippines level one 50 to 59 percent satisfaction of the applicable criteria indicators with savings reaching up to 20 29 percent level two 60 to 69 percent satisfaction with savings up to 35 percent Level three, 70 to 79 percent satisfaction with savings up to 40 percent. And level four, 
80 to 89 percent satisfaction with savings up to 46 percent. Now, uh, they left something good behind, and this one I will share with you. Uh, this is a good uh, resource, 118 pages long on various green technologies and suppliers that you may want to tap no? in, 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 in these uh, sustainability efforts that you want to do in your hotels and your tourism establishments, covering everything from energy, uh, all, all, all aspects, energy, to water saving devices, wastewater systems, your building envelope, monitoring devices, et cetera. Let me share that in the chat. Um, for the smaller establishments out there, uh, I would recommend, because there is no standard now for sustainability reporting for SMEs. You, you can imagine the complexity of that uh, but also the, the possible impact that this may have, considering that majority, as in 90% or more of businesses in the country are small and medium enterprises. This is a uh, simple three-step sustainability assessment that comes from Europe, specifically designed for SMEs. So I will share this on the screen also. Something uh, you can use. And lastly, uh, I'd like to end with this saying from one of our champions of the earth, Mr. Uh, Sir David Attenborough, don't waste electricity, don't waste paper, don't waste food. Live the way you want to live, but just don't waste. These are the sites I wanted to show you. Uh, just quickly, I also wanted to show you some pics. I was there during the awarding for the Anahau uh, uh, awardees in 2018. I accepted the award on behalf of Missibis Bay and Donatella Resort, which at the time were being managed by Enderan uh, Colleges. I also wanted to show this uh, signage from uh, Park Inn in Radisson in Bacolod. I just took this picture a few days ago when I was there at the breakfast buffet, and it's rare that I see a signage like this. Most hotels already have a signage within the rest, uh, the guest rooms and the bathrooms about you know leaving the hotel uh, on the uh, uh, le leaving the towels up if you want to reuse them right? or even putting the sign card on the bed if you don't want the, the sheets to be laundered yet but rarely do I see a signage like this that talks about uh, reducing your food waste and then uh, lastly for the LGUs out there uh, you also need to look into your compliance with RA 11285, the Energy Efficiency and Conservation Act. Um, you need to do this uh, in compliance. As far as uh, private establishments, you also need to do this depending on the amount of energy you consume per year. If you're consuming between 100,000 and 500,000 kilowatt hours per year, you need to appoint a certified energy and, and conservation officer. If you're doing more than 500,000 kilowatt hours, then you need to uh, uh, appoint a certified energy manager. If you're doing less than 100,000, uh, no, I'm sorry, it's 500,000 to 2 million kilowatt hours, certified energy manager. 100,000 to 500,000 kilowatt hours, you need to appoint a certified energy conservation officer. Uh, less than 100,000, you still need to submit a report to the DOE. Uh, and then for LGUs, you need to do all of this. So that in a nutshell is what I can share in the short amount of time. Uh, thank you for the opportunity and uh, I hope uh, you learned something. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sir Matthew, uh, for sharing your experiences in the industry. Uh, I really like what you said na hotels and mice should really try to go beyond compliance at this stage because uh, sooner or later uh, governments and even international organizations will be asking for um, these businesses to continuously report on their impacts. Um, thank you also for sharing the GSCC criteria and the ASEAN Green Hotels and Awards and for giving practical advice to our MICE and conferences um, industry. So I'm, I'm very sure that we will be applying 
um, the room temperature check next uh, week in our uh, final event at Novotel, which I'm inviting everyone to go to as well. So um, thank you also for sharing that there are lots of tools out there already for our businesses to be able to um, apply in their operations. So I will now hand over the virtual mic to uh, Kim Castillo to facilitate our open forum. Uh, we do apologize for going over time, but we'll allow one question per speaker. So if I can just invite every all of the speakers again to the virtual floor, then um, we'll proceed with the open forum. Uh, Kim, take it away. Okay, thank you, Andy. Um, may I request for the rest of the speakers, Ms. Serena and Dave, to join us here? I'll just add you on the spotlight. Okay. All right. So we actually have a few questions from the registrars uh, that they sent um in the registration. So I'd like to start the question poll with Dave. Like, hi, Dave. <laughs> um, nice to see you again. Um, I actually also went to um, Den Hogan Island, the GIZ project, and I was able to see the businesses, pilot businesses of Walausik. So this question is actually related to that. So do you think we can scale Walausik Sari Sari store business models to our hotels back and supply chain? such as on detergent, shampoo, and other cleaning supplies? Yes, I think actually the hotel hotels um, have more capability, you know, um, and also some systems are already in place for bulk purchasing to happen, um, in, you know, the back end of the operations. And the Sari Sari stores actually have uh, more of a challenge to, to transition, but hotels, especially the big ones, and uh, my uh, facilities, already have these uh, in place and I hope that, that it becomes standard. Yes, and actually working with the hotel sector, we actually saw a lot of um, businesses that are already implementing such, such actions and using their consumption and SUP. So we hope that we can also um, increase that uptake. So we could leave. Uh, next question we have for Ms. Brenda of GCB. So here we go. Um, in piece of this experience, how frequent do tourism businesses need to conduct training for their staff on concepts of sustainability? Uh, with that, po, I think uh, given, given the fact that most of the uh, hotel employees uh, or staffs are are being uh, uh, most of their time are being allocated with day-to-day uh, -day business operations. I think twice a year would be enough, or if possible, uh, we can conduct uh, trainings for like uh, a quarterly, and it would be nice to have a uh, separate na workshop for the management and the employees. Like for the management, we can have. Um, like the technicalities and specifics of sustainability reporting and action plan and also for the for the employees is that workshop for the implementations and uh, i think then po na uh, hindi naman constant talaga yung parang in an instant uh, much change agad ang mindset but i believe na with a consistent effort na magbibigay po uh, in promoting sustainability i think may extend talaga yung perspective natin uh, may extend yung perspective ng everyone to really divert or shift uh, the mindset to, towards sustainable development. Okay. Um, yes, uh, I also do agree on that. So a quick follow-up landing. What are the kind of sustainability topics that they need to learn more about? So do you have any recommendations for these businesses? Um, what kind of sustainability uh, they need to learn in order to implement those action plans? Uh, just like what uh, Sir Mackie said, na parang ang mga corporations ngayon is that uh, parang need na din to uh, have a sustainability report. I think mas magandang ma-focus din yung mga trainings towards that for, for corporations. So yun po. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Brenda. Um, okay. If anyone here in the Zoom participants have any questions, can you let us know as well? Yeah, um, moving on for the question for Ms. Rina. 
um, would you able to compare the experience of city hotels and restaurants compared to the hotels doing business on the outskirts of the city or even outside of big cities? Yes, Kim. Uh, actually, yung sa shinare ko earlier, no? Um, those like um, Albisa Hotel, Pico de Loro, they have lots of spaces. They can easily do their composting. So they just have to learn how to do it. But if you're in the city, and normally the, the challenge is no, we don't have space to, to do the whole composting. So um, they can... Uh, just commit to collecting the food waste properly so we, we can uh, compost it for them so they can subscribe to the composting services. So there's always a way. Um, it's much easier if you have all the resources to do it, but if not, it doesn't mean that you have to do it, just have to find a way on how it can be done. And um, hopefully we get to help in that aspect. Yes, Paul. It's actually also nice to see that there are a lot of um, hospitality businesses that are adopting the composting um, practice since it really helps po with the uh, food waste and like making more use out of it, not just not just ending up as a waste. So that's a really great effort po for our tourism sector. Okay, thanks, Miss Rina. And then I guess we have the last question for Sir Mackie. Um, and this is in relation po with the LG. So I hope our um, participants in the LGs are still here. So how can LGs empower both large and small hospitality businesses to publicly report on their environmental performance? Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, not just publicly report, but level up their sustainability game. Uh, a, a month ago, I had the chance to speak to the Hotel and Restaurant Association of Negros Occidental. So all of the owners or the top management of the various hotels and restaurants within Negros Occidental uh, were present. And I had a chance to speak to them about the, the mayor's long-term plans for solid waste management, about uh, partnering with them to get their used cooking oil and possibly convert it into biodiesel or, or other uses instead of it being thrown down the drain. I uh, had a chance to speak to them about food waste and, you know, options like composting or vermicomposting or, or other new tech that are coming out there. So it's engagement, number one. And uh, you give them you give them the opportunity to, to engage with you as LGU. And at the same time, you also would want to plan on an ordinance because if you notice my presentation, it was a lot of about mandatory and and you need to comply with this because from my experience, uh, these uh, establishments, uh, although they, they care about sustainability, they do have a hard time in implementing it. But once you talk about compliance, they are very, very you know, allergic to any violations and they really do their best to, to comply with laws and ordinances. So ordinance, uh, an LG ordinance uh, establishing or encouraging them to go green would always uh, be a good thing. Yeah, thanks for sharing that, Sir Mahdi. Um, Do we have any additional inputs Paul, from our speakers? Just any one that you want or anything that you want to add in terms of for, the, for our hotel industry to adopt more sustainable practices in their operations? So, Anyone who wants to um, give like a parting words for our participants, please kindly do so. Uh, I can uh, start, I guess, but this is really just uh, preempting our slides, Kim. Uh, just wanted to invite everyone else to our uh, uh, Transforming Philippine uh, Tourism Conference next week. November 8 to 9 at Novo Hotel uh, Manila, Araneta Center, Cubao. So that, that will give you the chance to be able to learn more about the different strategies of the hotels as well as uh, perspectives from international and national communities on sustainability in the tourism sector. Um, that's for day one. And then for day two, we will have um, we will tackle investment opportunities uh, in terms of tourism infrastructure and uh, green financing. So very exciting topics for uh, our tourism industry, our stakeholders. And we also have a multi-stakeholder exchange uh, workshop wherein everyone can share their experiences of the transforming tourism project. And 
so that we can also um, appreciate and celebrate all of the uh, milestones that the project has been able to um, achieve. So yeah, that's that's it from me. <laughs> Uh, yes, yes, Rina. For me, uh, you know, food waste is not a comfortable or a pleasing topic. No, parang it's not something you'll discuss over dinner. Ganyan, di ba? Who would talk about food waste? Pero uh, it's important to really be mindful of our food waste. So I hope we find ways to to um, engage our Yes, I think it was Dave who mentioned kanina na huwag tayong mahiyang sabihin dun sa guests natin kung ano yung mga programs that we have. And uh, you never know, they're actually looking for that na pupunta sila sa isang place thinking how, our, how would this trip be not destructive to the environment. So kung merong uh, initiatives yung, yung pupuntahan, then that would be ano, be add value to the to the ano, no, travel or to the to the whole ano, uh, activity so um yun nga, parang if you have a food waste program in place let your guests know and kung wala start looking at it now para um we we get to provide fun and ano uh, magandang activities over over our venue pero and then it's we won't be guilty of causing so much pollution yeah, thank you thanks Ms. Rina. thanks for sharing that if i may build on that uh kim um it is true um it is a choice to communicate and to market to a climate conscious uh you know market right Meaning, like for example, for places like Tenhugan, uh, pinupuntahan talaga siya because it's a conservation site. So we anticipate that all of our guests and everyone who's supporting the, 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 the enterprise are all already supportive of any effort to reduce the impact on the environment. However, you may ask, ano naman yung mga hindi um, knowledgeable? How can we, how can we um, on, you know, on, get them on board and to educate them? I think the best champions would be the guests that already practice it the tourists that already practice sustainable travel um and i think it would be the business of the future if you are not um helping the environment if you are harming the environment i don't think you deserve the business of the future generations you know what i mean like um people will not pay for your services or products if they know that you are not um or if you are harming the earth or not helping out Thanks for that, Dave. And then for anyone then who are interested in visiting the Nanhogan, I highly recommend. It's really a nice place. <laughs> May pop <laughs> yes, Thank you. Okay. It's really a nice place. Bro. Very calming. And then you can also enjoy um the island sometimes by yourself because it's very secluded. And then, yeah, a lot of things to appreciate there. Okay. um, Sir Maki, would you like to add books? I just wanted to thank my co-speakers, uh, Dave and Rina and Brenda. Let's all meet up in Bacolod sometime and uh, talk about uh, sustainability further. Uh, to the organizers, uh, Andy and Kim, uh, as you said, you look into uh, ways and means to make your uh, um, uh, conference next week more green. Uh, look into the food choices also. Uh, I've I've been in many conferences that were so-called sustainability uh, theme, but uh, they were serving lots of meat. So maybe one one aspect uh, that you can look into is serving vegan dishes in next week's conference. And just a general uh, message to all the attendees: Thank you. Just showing up here means you're you're a champion. Let's not forget why we are doing this. In all these conferences that we've attended, we always hear that we do it for the next generation. But let me. Uh, add, let me tie that in with the, the the theme I spoke about checking, you no, know? because eventually we are also accountable to to someone. In my case, it will be my two year old nieces and my future grandkids. That when they grow up in a super heated world with lots of environmental problems, they will ask me, eh, "Lolo, what did you do during your time?" So I can have a lot of answers to say. So it, we are also accountable because our future grandkids will be checking on us too. 
yeah, that's it. Thank you for that, Sir Maki. And last but not least, Brenda, any closing remarks for our participants? Uh, I I would just like to uh thank everyone po na nandito and especially po na uh na meet ko din ang mga co-speakers din po. And siguro po more than the technicalities like the para sa mga sustainability report action plan it uh ang change kasi talaga I believe na nagmumula din talaga sa bawat isa sa atin. And uh we, alam mo yung simpleng um gawin lang natin na makakatulong sa environment, I think napakalaking impact na siya. And pag pinagsama-sama natin yung mas lalong lalakin, I believe na talagang um, with with our consistent efforts talaga, and hindi natin tinitake for granted yung resources na nandito sa atin, I think so, sobrang makakatulong talaga sa environment. And also, thank you for this opportunity talaga po na makapag-speak sa inyo and makapag-share about sustainable consumption and production. And hopefully, madami pang ganito para ma-raise din, makapag-raise uh, din ang awareness, mas ma-engage pa yung mga tao to be more sustainable. And yun po, thank you, thank you so much po. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Brenda. Again, thank you everyone for um giving your time. And then we have some reminders din po for the participants. So I'd like to pass the floor again to Andy. Yeah, so just very briefly lang, we'll be uh, sending you guys action plan templates, not just for the LGUs, but also, of course, for the hotels and nice businesses. Um, it can be your practical application moving forward uh, to be able to um, apply the learnings that you've um, gotten from this workshop. Uh, and then please fill out the feedback form in the next slide. Uh, we will also be sending you this um, this uh, link in your post-training emails. Um, and then I've also mentioned the, the final event conference next week. So again, we'll also be sending that again to everyone who uh, missed it. Um, but yeah, I think that's the last slide now, no, Kim? Yeah, okay. So thank you so much, everyone, for uh, no, for attending this last workshop of the project. Um, thank you, Sir Maki, Brenda, Ms. Rina, and Dave, uh, for, and Kim for facilitating the open forum. Thank you so much for our participants. And um, I'm, I wish you all a happy Wednesday, a happy week uh, to be able to um, pursue sustainability and uh, uh, the little things. So yeah, thank you so much, everyone, and please have a good day. Thank you, Ko. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Bye.